with the prancing motor car and the ability to read at a glance local conditions. It's also a dance along the ragged edge between delight and disaster. Crews are about their business on stage one. After the opening stages, Derek Boyd is missing. John Lyons in the escort has taken a minute off the hard-pressed Opal of McRae. later and Lyons extends his lead over Jimmy McRae. In the group one near standard class, Richard Healy, the Dubliner, despite an excursion, lies second with his escort and he goes charging on. There are 13 stages in all this Friday afternoon. Every 30 seconds they're let away, and the fabulous R5 turn... Dublin, and the Chevette crosses the thin edge of adhesion. <laughs> Spectators that stand in the wrong place pay for their mistakes. And poor Austin McHale, the Group 1 leader, goes through having punctured and rolled the escort. A battered car, lacerated pride, and a serious loss of time. Come on. on the roadside, there are plenty of helpful hands to get the wrath cool driver back in the fray, but now he is a disastrous nine minutes down. After several more hectic stages, Brendan Fagan retires his Chevette. McRae and his Opal fails to make an impression on John Lyons' escort, and Ger Buckley is sixth behind Sean Campbell, Robin Lyons, and John Coyne, while Britain Terry Cabey has problems with his Vauxhall. To Ronman, John Lyons is having a joyride in his neighbouring county. Well, we're leading by about a minute and a half now. Settling in nicely. Settling in nicely. Fastest in every stage. Oh, very good stuff. Keep it going. Thank you. Okay. Stage after stage goes by. Scotland's Drew Gallagher retires, as does Ulsterman John Galise, while Richie Healy consolidates himself as Group 1 leader and 10th overall.
As day one closes, John Lyons and Bill Moffat lead by 90 seconds. But now attention is directed towards the quiet and pleasant town of Romelton. It's a mini Monte Carlo stage through the streets, the sort of thing that makes this Castrol Donegal International unique. Saturday morning early, and for some, the affairs of yesterday are still important. Vincent and Michael Bonner ended their brave effort against that Ramelton wall last evening. Today's 16 stages have to be faced, the field is whittled to 100, and several of those are struggling. But can Jimmy McRae step up the pace with his boiling Catini Opal? John Lyons is relaxed, the Castle Derg driver has steered a course from the start like a full-time professional. I should be so lucky to be a full-time rally driver. No, I'm a bank official. And um, that's what I work at, in the bank, although they give me time off for rallying, etc. But uh, I would like to say here, but Matt, this, the, so this is the second international I've done this year, and it's by far the best timed. It's uh, good, sensible timing, a bit of time for service, a bit of time to find out your times, and it makes it all the more enjoyable. It wasn't like the Circuit of Ireland, where it was just hell-bent and going on the road like a madman. But some but of those the, stages, uh, John, are pretty tough, aren't they? I mean, well, the stages are tough, but, Michael, after all, we're out here to do a rally. So the stages are tough. There's a good mixture of everything. And, uh, you know, that's, I think the, the bigger the challenge, the better we like it. Yeah, really. would you say, in fact, that Donegal, the roads in Donegal are perfect rally stages? I mean, from I the think, point of view of, of, of a challenge. Yes, Donegal is it's fantastic rally countryside. It really is. Fantastic rally countryside. What's the situation now vis-a-vis -vis yourself? I mean, you're, are you leading? Well, I'm leading, yes, and I've taken out uh, the, the, past, the first three stages there. I took some more time of Jimmy. But it's very, very tough going. And... Um, you know, I've only got a few tyres left, and uh, we haven't an endless supply of anything, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed and uh, that the tyres stick it out. And, you don't and look too there. worried, though, John. Ah, there's no point in worrying, Michael. No point. Well, I think he has the capabilities of staying in front of Jimmy. Uh, the only thing I'm a wee bit concerned about is the backup. I mean, we're still sort of a, a non-professional team trying to, <coughs> excuse me, provide a, a sort of... A professional backup, really, that's the problem. Again, Lyons is fastest on the next few stages. John Coyne is also blowing a storm. He's now third with the Talbot. And the Renault Turbo is not at its best on the tight twisting roads in Inishon. It's ninth overall and still getting spectator attention, but not for much longer. Austin McHale still charging as he passes the Renault Turbo, now buried in at Dunghill. It rally ends on this fast downhill right-hander, the beautiful rally car is a broken and sorry sight. Indeed, there are even more spectacular happenings to take place here on stage 19, close to Bunkrana. Both crew members are safe and sound. That's the price of the strict application of the safety regulations. Crumpled cars and injured pride can be repaired by time. Thank you. 
Escort 98, with Seamus Burke and Peter McCulloch at the controls, is quickly back in business. Spectators can come in handy at times. In fact, this crew is doing exceptionally well at 16th overall. News comes through that Sean Campbell, Noel Smith and Ken McKinstry have retired as John Price's Folly, the dunghill near Buncrana, continues to present problems to the unsuspecting. be the wrecked turbo car but the rally proceeds to finish the three days in some order is the objective one must look over the next hill and around the next corner indeed in many ways the rally driver is a strange breed of sports person well, we're staying in one piece everything is falling to bits but we're just about managing we haven't got a service crew you see so oh i see what did you think of that last stage very hairy finish oh uh, it's a pretty fast slippery tight stage no and it was very good for us. Yeah, was, uh, that last corner there, did uh, the last, uh, the, the, the finishing board's a wee bit dangerous, you know. Yeah. But it's all right. Yeah, a couple of the boys went off there. John uh, Kine went off and uh, number 98 went off and just John Price. Just tight, tight and so pretty quick on you. You have to, you know, you have to really... You're enjoying stop. yourself? Oh, I uh, very much. Okay. okay. Ernest, this is a little bit different than being master of a hunt, isn't it? And it's rather a change. After all, you've got to be at something in the summertime. Not quite as good fun, perhaps, as going over the Well, there are a lot of sort of awkward uh, obstacles back that road that there. That was a fairly think. tricky wee stage. A lot of very bad yumps. And we're having a little brake problem, so we're under a bit of pressure. Cheer up, boys. All the best! But John Lyons would seem to be uncatchable. He now has three minutes to spare over Jimmy McRae. Robin Lyons, no relation, but also from Castle Derg, and who has been in the top six since the start, has stopped with an expired engine in the Talbot Lotus Sunbeam. Richie Healy and Vincent Mead are still Group 1 leaders in the rest court. Indeed, they are sixth overall, so they are happy. Crew compatibility is important. There are bound to be tensions in the control room, as we hear from lady class leaders with their Opal Cadet, Mari Maloney and Catherine Tracy. Do you actually use a little bit of bad language now and again? Oh, doesn't go right. bad language! Yeah, it's atrocious! <laughs> Liar! It's atrocious! <laughs> yeah, well, we're still along. I mean, we're only halfway through the rally. Anything can happen, but uh, there was just no way we were going to be able to take time out of John. It was, it was just going too quick. Uh, I think we're laying for 12, 11 or 12 seconds behind John Kine. Are you happy with that position, or do you think you can in, uh, improve it? Well, I think we can. Uh, we had problems with the car, with the height of the car. Now we cut during the service there. We had an hour and a half for service. We cut off the brackets off the um, off the body and welded them on up higher. So our car is now about an inch and a half lower, and that should certainly help. Oh, I'll be going as hard as I can. Um, I think Jerry and myself over the last six stages have been swapping times. He'll go four seconds ahead. We'll take it back. We'll try and keep at that and maybe build a little bit on it. Five, four. 